so many times we as people of faith are um well both excited but also ignorant and in a rush to proclaim something as a miracle or healing while it can be uh that we just had a good day or maybe it was like you said placebo effect or maybe it was an adrenaline rush when we didn't feel pain or something happened but then the illness the disease the pain whatever is that bothers us uh came back later uh so i'm that's why my, my skeptical mind is like yes god i want to see miracles i want to experience miracles but also i'm very careful with what i would proclaim as a miracle especially if i will be working in a situation where you have patients around you i think you have to be very wise and very careful what you're saying because if you would be in a position like in some churches to tell people that you're not healed because you don't have enough faith or some false damaging theology like that, you can uh, spiritually injure people to the point that they can think God doesn't love them or doesn't exist and they can drift away from the faith. So in that context, I appreciate your, um, you know, your introduction. Yeah, no, and I, I, that's a really good point you brought up. I think with the theology, I don't believe that it's God's will to heal everyone. A lot of charismatic Christians think that. And I think it that reduces people to victim blaming, unfortunately, where they basically said that if you're not healed, it's either your fault because you didn't have enough faith in God or the person praying for you didn't have enough faith in God, right? But I think just from experience, intuitively, we know that that's not true. I'm not saying that that never happens. Certainly, there are cases where people need more faith, but I would never blame at least I would never say for, for sure that someone's failure to be healed is because they didn't have enough faith. And I think God can use disabilities for greater goods. I mean, if you know Joni Erickson Tata, she's a very famous uh, painter back in like the, I think, 80s or maybe before that. Uh, she was a quadriplegic. She broke her neck when she was diving when she was like 17, I think, and she couldn't move her hands or arms. And so she paints what she paints with her mouth. And she was, you know, she wanted to be healed and she never was. But she prayed to God and she felt that was her purpose. And so she makes these beautiful paintings that sell for lots of money. And it's unique because not many people can paint with their mouth. Uh, so, you know, taking your situation and making the most of it and still having your faith in God, I think it's a great thing. And so I think there are reasons like that where God doesn't, he God doesn't heal everyone because people can use those disabilities and, and have a strong testimony and maintain their faith and get through that. It's a trial to overcome, right? So if everyone was healed, it would really... I think reduce the beauty of that and the fact that we live in a world where sometimes people are, have prayers answered sometimes people don't it does make a diversity of experience uh prayer wouldn't be special if all prayers were answered right not to say that god answers prayers that he likes someone more than someone else but i think we all use our situations for our advantage if god uses our healing to his glory then that's great and if god uses our disability to his glory where we can use that and do a lot of good through that each side, you get a very unique experience that the other person is not going to know what it feels like. So I think it, in, a, in some ways it is sad because we all know people who've been prayed for who aren't healed and we always want them to be healed. But I think there is a lot of beauty in being able to overcome our trials like this and being able to hold to faith even when God doesn't always answer our prayers. And so, yeah, I, I think you were spot on on that kind of uh, theology in that way.